Good morning. Welcome back to Marty's Tying Bench. This week's Vice Squad kit is the, I call it a Sparkle Gulper Special. There's a good Calabatus imitation called a Gulper Special. I've added a little bit of a flashy post to it just for fun and a little bit of ease in tying for the, for the beginners among us. <clears throat> this is tied on a Dairiki size 12, 070. It's kind of a small hook for a 12. It's just about right. Now I'm going to use a light colored thread. I'm using a, a gray. Tan would work well. Black kind of shows through the dubbing, so you do want a light colored thread for this one. Now you can tie this thing with lots of different colored bodies. I'm tying it with a very light tan. If you wanted to tie it with an olive or muskrat gray, you could probably get away with black just fine. For tail, I've just got any old spade feather, grizzly. I'm going to pull those fibers out until they're pretty even and then peel them off. Now if I can keep those butt sections even, the tips will stay even. So I'm just going to kind of collapse them together. There we go. If you get any that are uneven, just hold the feather fibers lightly and tap it against your thumbnail, and that will stack it even better. You want the tail to be about the length of the hook shank. You can never, you can never really go wrong with that proportion. Now, I started my thread about a third of the way back on purpose. That's kind of an index. That's where I'm going to put my post. So now I'm just going to wrap back to the start of the bend of the hook and then just make one turn underneath. Kind of gentle. Just spread those fibers out a little bit. And now I'm going to come forward to my index point. For post material I'm using Baitfish Emulator Flash. This is kind of a so material I use a lot on synthetic clousers. It's sewn on one end, so what I'm going to do is clip off about what I've discovered to be a good density of fibers. And I'm going to tie from the other end, leave that sewn end together for your next flies. Now a couple of very tight turns right on top of each other and then I like to get a couple of anchor wraps in front and before I post it I'm going to make a couple behind. Lift that up. And if you have trouble making a parachute post it's usually because you have too much tension. So what I've got is very little tension except for what I'm holding on to the post. Then I can tighten it up. Lighten up for the wrap, then tighten. Now I'm going to make some turns and creep up to the top. And I can make more later, later when, I, when I install the hackle, so just get that posted. Now, I'm going to dub it with Superfine, which I highly recommend. This color is tan. You'll also want to tie it in a color known as Calabatus, Adam's Gray, and kind of a medium olive. But I like the tan. Most of our fly boxes don't have anything this light in it, so a lot of the Calabatus duns we see are pretty light colored. <clears throat> this is a good fly because you can fish it during the emergence because it's got the, the dun color. You can also fish it after they've laid eggs and fallen spent because their bellies are in the water as well. So this is a pretty good all-purpose fly. If you're only carrying one Calabatus dry, this is a pretty good choice. Now I paid most of the attention to the taper on the back end. The front end I just put my extra dubbing up there. I'll fix it with another lift of dubbing here in a few minutes. Okay, now I just have a, a grizzly saddle hackle, and I want those hackle fibers to go back just a little past the body, but not past the bend of the hook. 
that gives you a, a a little bit of a range there where it can look good. You can tie them a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, but you try and keep your tips in those ranges. Now you see I stripped some barbules off of this feather because I don't want the barbs to get trapped. And what I'm going to do is lift this straight up until the shiny side of the feather is against the post and that will help when I start wrapping the parachute. Okay, you see I wrap those turns up to the top but now that feather pulls out with, without any barbules. There's just a tiny bit of bare stem there. Very helpful. <clears throat> now I'm going to fix my dubbing. Dub the front half. Get a little more super fine. And this is one you don't have to keep everything terribly slender. These have a little bit of little bit of robustness to the bodies. So I'm going to taper what's in front, and now I'm going to go ahead and extend a little dubbing behind. And you can kind of go back and forth. The trick is to have your thread finish hanging right there on the far side of the post. Now when you pull the grizzly down, <clears throat> I like to wrap it with the shiny side up. The first turn, hopefully it's right on the thread. Second turn is right below. Three. You want at least four. Okay, now to tie this off, I'm going to tie it off on the post. So I'm going to keep my thread low. So I'm lifting any fibers that want to stick down. You notice I'm holding the, the rest of the saddle hackle down as well. So that's trapped. Now I'm going to lift the feather up to make another two turns. And that will lock that stem in place. <clears throat> now you can sweep those back. Get your thread right up there on the eye and tie your half hitches or whip finish. Now I'm going to pull that post straight up again. Now I'm ready to trim everything. I want that post to be about the same length as the hackle fibers are wide. under there and cut the hackle stem. And there you have it. Sparkle Gulper Special. There's your Calabatus Dry Flight.